from the import. Um, and it's caused by a deficiency or diminished amount of insulin in your body or uh, a resistance to, the, um, uh, to, the, to insulin if it is there. And that results in a high uh, blood sugar level. Okay? So there are different types of diabetes. Now, they, we've just listed three there. They're, they're, they're more than just three different types. But the ones we know more about are these. These are the top ones. Diabetes types 1. Generally speaking, that means you need insulin from outside. So this is where the people stick themselves and give themselves insulin. Type 2 is you actually have some residual uh, function in your body of creating insulin, but you're not creating enough insulin. Or your body creates enough, but you're but the, the muscles and the liver and the rest of the, the body that uses the insulin is resistant to it, okay? And the third one there is gestational diabetes. Now that's, so some women will, will know that during pregnancy, because of the excess stress of the additional body, etc., and the additional hormones, etc., that you get diabetes that is confined to the pregnancy. Now, interestingly, that does increase the chance of becoming diabetic in the future, but it actually resolves once a stressor has been removed. Type 1 diabetes, approximately 15% of those who have diabetes, usually on uh, juvenile onset. Uh, so it's not the most common type, uh, but often we see this in, in, young, in young people. So you'll find people in their teens, in their 20s, for <coughs> diabetics, and it's typically this type, the type 1 diabetic, uh, there's a concordance in twins of 30%, so there's some genetic predisposition to this. We think it might be related to, to certain infections, such as viral infections in the, um, or there's something about cow's milk, so if you, if you feed babies or newborns with cow's milk, they may, there may be some, uh, some cross-reactivity of the human insulin to the cow, the protein in the cow's milk, and that you actually develop uh, antibodies. Your body develops a defense mechanism to actually kill your insulin cells. Um, uh, people who have insulin, uh, so they actually have a deficiency, type 1, a deficient, you have a lack of producing insulin. So you have what we call, you approach something called ketoacidosis, and this is what kills a lot of our diabetics. Um, certainly in the, you know, 10, 20 years ago, this is, this used to be a, a number one killer because the sugar levels will go high, but the body the sugar wasn't going in, the glucose wasn't actually going into the cells where it was needed because the insulin is what drove the, uh, the glucose from the bloodstream into the, into the cells of the body, which is where they, they're needed to make energy to do the work. Um, the risk of type 1 diabetes um, is broadly similar in all, so, so all peoples of the world uh, are affected, uh, can be affected by, um, uh, by type 1 diabetes. On life, Type 2 diabetes, which is, yeah, which, is um, which is the more common one. So a lot of people will, will find that most people they know who are of a certain age, they're type 2 diabetics. Okay? Type 2 diabetes, you do produce some insulin, but your body, it doesn't have the same effect as it should, or the normal effect on the cells. So it might be hammering the cell to, or driving the cell to, to put glucose into it, but it's not as effective, so it doesn't, it doesn't mop up the insulin, uh, the glucose in the bloodstream, so the bloodstream has a higher level of glucose. Uh, you typically find this in people who are, uh, who are overweight or have lower physical activity. Um, in terms of race distribution, actually, yes, there is a, some, uh, uh, some distribution, uh, so there's an increased prevalence in, in certain groups, and the Afro-Caribbeans, uh, for instance, South, uh, South Asians, uh, American Indian, so there is a, a predisposition in certain ethnic groups. Uh, type 2 diabetes may eventually need insulin. So not because somebody needs insulin means you're type 1 diabetic, as we said before, uh, but type 2 diabetes, if the control is poor with tablets, so people with type 2 diabetes take tablets, if that becomes difficult to control, even on tablets, then we actually have to move the patient on to, to insulin. Prevalent, so it's quite prevalent, isn't it? 2.9 percent, 2.9 million people with diabetes, uh, with estimated 5 million in 2025, and this is just talking about the UK, by the way. Um, 850,000 people in the UK who have diabetes but don't actually know it. 
So there are lots of people walking around. Now, there are people who actually don't come to know that they have diabetes until they actually have a complication of diabetes, which means if you have a complication, then it's been there for at least a, de a decade. Um, we find that it's actually increasing. Now you'd say, well, obesity is increasing, etc. So probably, and you're right, if, 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 if obesity and certain lifestyle diseases are increasing, then diabetes is one of them that will definitely increase. Risk factors, obesity, as I said before, especially central or truncal obesity. You can't see that image, but that should be a, um, uh, so, so you have the apple shape or the pear shape, yeah? Uh, so the apple shape is the, the more rounded torso, you know, the, between, the, between the neck and the, the thigh is rounder. That's where you carry the weight. Um, so that tends to be a, a, an at-risk group. The lack of physical activity, you'd imagine. And the ethnic groups that we mentioned before, and people who have a history, so they've had uh, diabetes in pregnancy, so most times it actually resolves after pregnancy, but we find that in later life, they do have a tendency to become diabetics as well. Um, people who tend to have a high, a sweet diet, a sugary diet, and, or, a, or a low fiber diet, tend to, to be at risk of diabetes. And as we said before, there's a family history of diabetes as well. So if, if mommy was diabetic at age, I don't know, 50, then likely you'll become diabetic at around the age, a similar age, unless actually you can modify some of those other things. So there are some things that you can modify and some things you, you surely can't modify. You may, but you may be able to modify the time that it comes on. So you might well develop diabetes type 2 in the future, but what you can do is actually delay that onset by managing your weight, managing your exercise levels, managing the food that you eat, and so forth. And uh, some medication can actually increase the likelihood or tip you into becoming a diabetic. And some of the medication groups we have there are things like thiazides or beta blockers. And lots of people know about steroids. So steroids increase the chance of you becoming diabetic. Uh, symptoms of diabetes. Now this is very important. Top left, you're feeling tired. Okay? So you're feeling more tired. You're more, there's more lassitude. You're more sleepy, drowsy all the time. Uh, always hungry. Yeah? And we call this, uh, well, always hungry means that you always eat as well, doesn't, doesn't it? And we call this thing polyphagia. Poly means what? Many. Whereas phagia means yeah, Pac-Man. Yeah? Phagia means eating. So you're always eating. You feel like you want to eat all the time. Um, certain, uh, we have their sexual problems because those are related to blood vessels. Uh, some weight loss. Because what we said before, insulin drives glucose into the cells where it produces fat, where it produces energy, etc. So you can see why it's why you're tired all the time, because you're not driving, you're not getting the energy levels. Why are you losing weight? Because you're not actually putting the glucose into the cell where it can be processed. Uh, wounds won't heal, so you'll find that because the high glucose level actually affects your immunity, um, it causes poor healing. But uh, also, we said before, it affects the blood vessels. If you have if it damages the blood vessels, then you don't have enough nourishment going to the wound. So if you get a wound, it doesn't heal as easily. Uh, infections, uh, we spoke about numbness and tingling in the hands and feet. We call that a glove or sock distribution. That's where people don't feel, uh, they don't feel their fingertips or so. And this can actually vary depending on the, depending on the control of the, of the diabetes. And what that means, it's, it's affecting the nerves, okay? So we said it's affecting the vessels. We said it's affecting um, uh, the, 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 your, your immune system, and now we said it's affecting your what? The nerves, okay? Always thirsty. Why are you always thirsty? So glucose is, if you put glucose on the countertop, anybody knows what happens to it? It becomes supple, doesn't it? It gets sticky. It actually attracts water. Did you know that? Is that new? Okay. So it attracts water. So when your, your, uh, your bloodstream, when it's going through the kidneys, which is flushing through, Actually, the, the glucose gets flushed through uh, the, what we call the nephrons in the kidney. And because it's flushed through, it draws the water with it. So you get what we call polyuria, many urine. You, 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 you urinate quite a bit, okay? And if you urinate quite a bit, which was the polyuria, which is top right, you actually feel thirsty quite a bit, which is polydipsia. Three polys there, aren't there? So polyphagia eat a lot, or eat more, you're hungry all the time, polydipsia, you drink, you feel more thirsty quite a lot, and polyuria, you frequent urination. Those are the three top things that lots of people come 
I get up at night to pass water. I don't normally do it, but I find myself getting up two or three times, and it's a lot of water. Now, don't mistake this with things like prostate problems or so, uh, which can also give you increased urination at night, but that's for a different reason. But if you find yourself going to the toilet often at night, then think, could this be diabetes? Okay? So, we spoke about how people present in that manner. Uh, some people can actually present, as we said, the type 1 diabetic in a severe state, which is what we call uh, keto, uh, ketoacidosis. And that's what kills a lot of our type 1 diabetics. Because, because they're young, they don't recognize that they're not well. Okay? It's not as mommy said, why are you getting up at night to go use the toilet? You know, one of my colleagues, he, he found out he was diabetic when he just became so tired that he was falling asleep everywhere and he was getting up constantly to go use the toilet. And when he went to the hospital, they found that his glucose was 50. You know, as opposed to five, by the way. Okay? People may, may develop these, uh, I said, the, non, the, ting, uh, the tingling and numbness in the fingers. That's when it's gone really bad. That's when it's affected the nerves. We spoke about certain dysfunctions, so vascular dysfunction and healing. It's damaged the vessels. So some people only present when it becomes, when you, you present with complications. Okay? Some of the complications, we said the acute ones and then the, the chronic ones. And the chronic ones are the, uh, the ones that affect the heart. We know it affects the heart, we know it affects the brain, it affects the brain in, uh, and the vessels. So I'll, I'll cover these three, the heart, the, lung, the, 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 the brain, and the, and the vessels, because it's the same mechanism. What it's doing is, instead of the vessels being nice and round, they become squished, they become smaller, so that they become narrowed. And if a vessel is narrowed, then you have less blood flow through it. And if you have less blood flow to the brain, then you can develop a, a stroke. If you have less blood flow to the heart muscle, you have what is called a, a, heart, attack. a heart attack. And that's, um, so going back to the brain again, they call it brain attack now because you're actually losing, losing cells when that happens. And there might be some correlation with things like dementia, what we call vascular dementia, because you're losing brain cells, there's a risk for dementia. Peripheral arterial disease, so you're losing the blood supply to the legs or, or different parts of the body for that matter. And, um, as I said before, if you get ulcers, if you get wounds, if you bump your toe, normally it heals in a couple of days. You find that with diabetes, it's not healing and it's probably even getting worse and it's prone to infection. So the escalation continues. You notice that the doctor will look in their eyes if you're diabetic, they tend to look in the eyes because in your eyes, it's an unimpeded view of the blood vessels right at the back of the eye. So you can tell what's happening in the blood vessels, in the carotids or the, or the aorta or the heart vessels. You can tell that by looking at the vessels in the eyes. And so it's important for us to, if we're diabetics, to, to continue doing. I think most people will have an annual checkup for their eyes, but some people need it a bit more often depending on the control of their diabetes. There are increased risk of cataracts and glaucoma, again because of the increased amount of sugar, glucose, uh, for the eye. You know, it, it, it changes into something called sorbitol, which can't be absorbed, and therefore you get the glaucoma, the cataracts, etc. Neuropathy. That's what we talk about when we, when we speak about the tingling and numbness and shooting pains and those kinds of things. So you might actually lose feeling uh, as a result of this. And you can think about it, if you lose feeling, like leprosy, if you lose feeling, you tend to bump yourself without knowing and you harm yourself, you cut yourself. And if you cut yourself and don't know, then you don't care for it. And then if you don't care for it, it becomes worse. You follow the, the unfortunate, you know, tumbleweed apparently, it just, it, just, uh, it, it just snowballs into things getting worse and worse. Diabetic nephropathy, I said the glucose go through the nephrons and they get washed out and pull water with them. Um, because you're passing so much glucose through the kidney, it can actually damage the kidney as well. Uh, so you find that one of the most common reasons for, uh, certainly in Jamaica, if, for, for renal failure is diabetes. Okay? And that still remains one of our top problems, um, even in, in the UK, that diabetes leads to, leads to, um, leads to uh, 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 renal failure. Diabetic foot is a combination of the vessel disease, the immune problem, the, and the neuropathic problems. Okay? Where you get the ulcer, don't know, it gets worse. It's interesting, isn't it, that you, you need your nervous system to help you to heal as well. It's all interconnected. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so let's talk about how can we, um, how can we improve this. So eating is a large, it, you know, it's a large part of how we manage diabetes. So let's go through these 10 steps. Eat three meals a day. So I have a conflicting view here, don't I? I have eat three meals a day, and then down there I have 
the, uh, the cross out, don't eat three meals a day. Now the reason for that is, it's good to have three main meals a day. And what I tell people is, if you're supposed to have, I don't know, 1800 calories per day, divide those calories up across the day. So not really three meals, but three main meals, and have probably three small snacks. I'm not saying have your usual three big meals, and then in addition to that, three small snacks. What I'm saying is those 1800 calories, divide it across those six incidents at the table. So the six times you go to the table should all add up to 1,800 calories. If it's 100, 1,800 calories that is recommended for you. Now it's the different, it'll be different for different people because women are, are lower typically than men because men are more muscle bulk than women. Um, obviously if you're a larger frame then you'll need more, 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 uh, more calories per day. So it will vary. If you're a teenager, you'll find that teenagers you know, as teenagers you tend to mix sweet stuff more than, than adults because you need that extra energy. So it varies from activity level and so forth. But what I'm saying is, a nutritionist is probably the best person to tell you how much is your requirement for the day. But normally the, an adult female is about 1600, an adult male is about 1800 to 2000. But you divide that up across the day. So what's happening? You don't get these, these peaks. So you eat and your sugar goes up and then it comes down. And then you eat lunch again and it goes up. What you're trying to do is a smaller meal now, so it goes up. When it's coming down, a smaller snack, and it goes up again. So you're causing, so the, what we call the, the vari that variation, you're trying to let it swing a lot less. Because those large variations, even in high blood pressure as well, by the way, those large variations is what causes the major injury. So it escalates the injury. Uh, next one is, include starchy carbohydrate foods as part of your diet. Now we spoke about that recently at our afternoon tea here, where we spoke about carbohydrates and try to make it as complicated as possible. As complex as possible, the, the starch is, the, the carbohydrate is, starch being one of the complex carbohydrates, the better it is for you. Because it, it's slow, it's a slow release. So you don't have, again, you don't have that, if you eat a mint or a sweet, the sugar goes up like that. If you have some pasta, it goes up like that and it slowly comes down, which is better for us, okay? Eat all bran, potatoes, those things. And we spoke about that, as I said, at the, um, at the uh, at our, um, at our afternoon tea. We spoke about the potatoes, and we spoke about having the potatoes with the peel on it. Okay? There's a lot of a lot of um, a lot to get from the peel of the potato. We spoke about the purple potato, in fact, uh, at one point, and the different. Yes, mashed potatoes is good, but you lose the skin. <laughs> so the potato itself does have complex carbohydrates in it, but you add the skin and you've, 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 you've added a punch to that meal. Okay, next slide please. Number three, cut down on fat in your meals. Okay, and in particular, saturated fats. Now you can see the saturated fats at the bottom, the burger, the chips, the fried stuff, the um, biscuits as well. Now that's something that I'm trying to get away from. In, our, in what we give out here actually, our biscuits. So if you look on our table over there, you'll see some of the healthy, uh, we have water there, we have fruits, I say we, or Sister Tate has provided for us some fruits, because these are the, the ideal things. Now interestingly, bananas, bananas do have simple sugars in them. So you do have to be careful, even with fruits, that you have to be careful that you're not overdoing a good thing, okay? Uh, these are sausages being fried in oil and so forth. So, as much as possible, grill, steam, oven bake, the best, yeah? So you avoid cooking with oil. Some of you will have had lunch when with us here. A lot of the stuff that Kristen would have provided you with had no oil at all in it, you know? So try to cook without oil, we know it's possible, okay? Having semi-skimmed or skimmed, um, uh, uh, you know, different types of foods, reduce fat foods as well. Next slide, please. So read your labels. Again, we went through that in our afternoon tea, which we will probably present here at some point. But read the labeling. There's a, there's a, uh, you know, there's a color scheme on there. How about vegetables? Eat more vegetables, fruits and vegetables. It's good for you. It increases your fiber. Fiber increases your gut health. But fiber actually, because of the bulk, slows down the release of what you've eaten, so that it doesn't dump it into the gut where it gets absorbed. So again, that's a way of slowing down the uptake of the glucose into the body. So it stops your blood from spiking those glucose levels. And uh, I spoke about the potato, the peel in the potato, super, super food because it has that extra fiber in it. Uh, increase, include more beans, lentils, nuts, and so forth. Again, you know, I love my, my red peas because, or red, red beans, 
because the peel actually is chock full of fiber. But then there's a, the others to go with that as well. Um, number six is aim for at least two portions of oily fish a week. Now obviously some of us don't eat fish, uh, we might be vegan, so I put the, the supplement there with the fish, okay? Because the fish oil contains omega-3, which is a good oil for the body, okay? Um, good for the heart, you, you'll notice that they, some of the, um, they'll sell these types of butters where they, they, they you know, they say contains omega-3. Have you seen that on the packaging? Yeah. Because omega-3 is, is heart healthy, it's good for the heart. Number seven, limit sugar and sugar foods. Needless to say, I mean, the government have been pushing this for fizzy drinks. Now there's a sugar tax or something like that, I understand. Yes. You know, so, so do avoid, if it's sweet, it's probably wrong, okay? Reduce salt in your diet to about six grams. Now what's that doing in, in, a, in a presentation on, on, on diabetes? Salt, how does salt affect things? Well, salt affects blood pressure. However, what they found is that there's a correlation between people who have high blood pressure and diabetes. So a lot of people would be on their medication will include both of those. Okay? So reduce your chance of getting high blood pressure. You might actually be helping her reducing your chance of getting diabetes as well. Abstain from alcohol. I need not to say much more about that. But abstinence means not having any at all. Uh, and number 10 and final point there is don't use diabetic foods or drinks. Why would you not do that? So I remember looking at something with, with, with my wife at the supermarket. We were looking at yogurts. And there was a low fat yogurt and there was a you know and there was a normal yogurt and we looked at it actually you know the calories were um, were probably less but to get the taste they actually increased something else in it so and they may not have as much fat but they may make up fat in sugar okay so you just you don't have to be mindful of what you're eating the, the point is eating less of a greater variety really is is the, is the key um, so don't overdo. All right. Why well, on this slide do you say a sentence about low sugar foods? So nowadays in schools, all the drinks are low sugar drinks. Yes. With aspartame, sucrose, and can you just say a sentence or two about what you think about low sugar replacement products? Yes. So, I mean, so about 20 years ago, I think, when we had what's the name of that uh, replacement? Saccharin. So when we started out with saccharin, um, we knew that there was an increased incidence of uh, cancers. Uh, with this, with this, basically it's a drug, you know, um, because it's a, it's a chemical with a large, with a ringed structure in its, in its molecular uh, makeup. So we know that these things are not good for us. Um, so ideally, best avoid it. Now, I heard a physician saying, the, so it's a balance, isn't it? So I have two bad things. It's a lesser of the two evils, really, actually. So if I have sweeteners, you're, you're more likely to have a problem with having the sweet drink um, from the effects of diabetes and so forth than having a sweetener containing drink because the risk of a cancer is very low and you're, you've improved your chance of not getting diabetes. So it's a lesser of two evils, but probably, again, if you look at the table, best avoid it, have water, okay? And if you have a sweet drink, you know, I don't think there's anything particularly wrong with a sweet drink, but I'm not gonna have a sweet drink and a banana and some cookies, okay? I'll probably omit the cookies this time or I might have half a banana. You have to monitor the meal, not as a, a single event. Your meal is that day event. I need to manage how I, how I load the day. I say load the day because if I said 1,000, you, know, you need, a, let's say 2,000 calories per day, you front load it. You don't say I need to have 1,000 in the first half of the day and 1,000 in the latter half, no. You try to actually front load the day because your activity level is is front loaded. Okay? And yes, the next point is exercise. Exercise. It's keeping active. Uh, listed there are a number of different ways you can improve your activity. And I heard that so much. I was in Jamaica this week, and the radio stations have it constantly. Increase your activity. Go walking. Stop the bus at once. Stop before. Take the stairs. Uh, get up. You know, things like somebody was asking me, I was standing and eating. You know, it seems barbaric, doesn't it? Standing and eating. But actually, standing and doing things is better than sitting and doing things. So, standing and eating is okay. You'll find that some of the, some of the newer stores that you go into or newer establishments, you find that the workers are working at elbow level. Did you notice that? You've not noticed that yet? Yeah, if you go into the restaurants, yeah, you'll, see, you'll see elbow level eating space and you have sitting space as well. So, the health conscious will be eating at, the, at this height. 
Okay? So be mindful of that. In my workplace, they've built us desks that no longer sit there, but they actually, yeah. you can rise them up to elbow level as well because it's healthier for you. Okay? Next slide, please. I think we're coming to the end now. Managing your weight, it's important. Okay? Our overall weight is important, but actually the distribution of our weight is also important. Okay? Next slide, please. And that ends the talk. So we did it in just under half an hour, which is not too bad, but it doesn't leave any time for too many questions. But if you have any questions, do text it in. That's our number, which is still live. This is our email address, which is the, the Bridgeford Hub. And that actually, Bridgeford Hub Adventist, is our, is our web page as well. So do go to our web page, which I, which I think this talk will be uploaded to as a PDF, as well as our... Um, or Sabbath sermons are also uploaded there. So if you miss a day, or you're at home, etc., for you know on uh, reasons, then you can actually watch not live, but you can you can look at a um, at a previous uh, previous day's event. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Let's just pick that back up then for the um, for the address. So this is our web page. It's our web page, so make a note of that, keep it in your favorites. This is our email address. You can, you can email any help, requests on that, or you can WhatsApp or text uh, to our hub phone as well. Yes, brother, no? You, you know, uh, you were mentioning fiber and eating skin as a... Yes, peels. Would yes. skin like orange, orange skin do you have? Uh, so the, the pulp inside is probably okay. Yeah? The, the peel itself, now, as I said, you may have heard me say, a friend of mine actually eats the peel. Yes. But he doesn't eat the peel all at once. He'll have his orange in the morning, and the peel, he basically picks, and throughout the day, he'll eat the peel of the orange. And I don't think anything's wrong with that. Some use it as tea. Hmm? Some, Some dry, use it as tea, that's right, but it's better drying it first, etc. Because there are certain chemicals in the, in the peel that means that you shouldn't, you probably shouldn't have all of it all at once. So I wouldn't stop the whole orange in my mouth. <laughs> yes. Rona was asking about mashed potatoes earlier. Yes, mashed potatoes. And, um, and you mentioned oh, about having to peel the skin. Yes. Now I went to a meal once, and the girl had mashed the potatoes with the with skin. With the peel on, yes. Yeah, I've seen that. Since that, I've started to do it. And you hardly notice it once you, you know, once you boil it enough and yep. mashed it enough. Yep. You hardly notice it because I wouldn't have done it unless you know, I didn't think that you could do that. So Rona, you could possibly. You can mash a potato with the skin. I've seen it before. You can you can actually mash it with this with a, with a peel on it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so things like yams, you can actually just scrape your yam, scrape your yams and bake it. You can you know we spoke about a purple potato, so the coloured sweet potato. You just just pop it in the oven, wash it, pop it in the oven, make a cut, and that's it. That's all you need to do. Okay. But the peel is very 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 uh, very nutritious. With regards to sweeteners, um, the best thing is to avoid those saccharins and aspartame and all of that. So whether the cancer risk is lower than smoking, whatever yeah. we want to minimize. So for sweeteners, one of the best thing you could use is maple syrup and honey as well. So you, if you have to have sweets, sweets yes, if you, you want to pep it up, because what those do, whereas they're still sugars. The glycemic index is lower and also there's a coconut sugar as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what it doesn't do is do this and that. It rises slower so, yeah. and it so it keeps just like what Elder Greg said. Yeah. Yeah. And I have a friend who blends his milk with some dates before making porridge. Ooh, wow. so they use a, yeah, he gave it a Again, yes. you have to be careful. So my mom does that. So she, when I had my, my mom made cereal for me when I was home and um, it was very sweet. And the reason for that is because she actually popped too much raisins in. So you have to be mindful that it's, you know, as again, you're looking at the whole day. You're looking not just at that meal for the moment. You're looking at the whole day. And you just need to load it in the proper proportions. I'm not going to have all my calories in the morning and then suffer for the rest of the day. Okay? Thank you very much. I think we have to stop there because we have the rest of the day's program to go through. Hopefully next time we can start on time and we might be finishing, might be finished in due course that we can have five or ten minutes worth of question and answer. Thank you very much. Amen. Amen.